We're looking now at what muscles are active when, and I do not expect that you will remember this without going back and reviewing it, particularly at the end when we look at a variety of positions. But let's think about full finger extension. All of the muscles that extend the finger are active, and the flexors are inactive. In the intrinsic plus position, both intrinsic muscles are active, but the extrinsic flexors and the extrinsic extensors are inactive. Thus, this is called intrinsic plus. The active hook position. All of the extrinsics are active. EDC is extending the MP joint, FDS, FDP, the IP joints, but the lumbrical and interossei are relaxed and are actually elongated. In this posture, the same is true. We would call this a claw or the hyperextended claw or the intrinsic minus posture. In this position, the interosseous and the lumbrical muscles are both being elongated to their maximum. Full finger flexion. At the end range, yes, the interossei are active with strong grip. The lumbrical is inactive, and at end range, the EDC is active, with, of course, the extrinsic flexors being active to bring the finger down into full flexion. So during normal finger flexion, the lumbrical and the interossei are silent unless there is strong, strong grip required, in which case the interosseus becomes increasingly active and has a very strong contribution. Let's look now at going from extension to flexion. I do not expect you to remember this, but I think this is a chart that you may want to go back to your handout and review. We can see that when we go either from full finger extension or hook posture into greater flexion, that it changes as to the contribution of the extensor digitorum communis, but during finger flexion, the lumbrical is active only if there's interphalangeal joint extension, never when there's interphalangeal joint flexion. Flexion to extension, we see the opposite. We see the lumbrical picking up. We see that if there's resistance, the interosseus contributes more. And here, when just the MP joint is extending, the lumbrical and interosseus stay totally inactive, but the FDS and FDP are active in both postures. What about combined flexion and extension? If we go from this extended posture at the IPs flexed at the MP to the exact opposite position, it takes the extrinsics and no intrinsics to get us to this posture. The opposite is true going in the opposite direction. I think studying these, these uh, charts will help you think through everything that we discussed and will help you apply it in the clinic when you're actually evaluating a patient.